thank TEDx for the opportunity to look and dress like a girl. In my line of work, this seldom happens. This is what a normal day in the office looks like for me. Now, you can't tell by this photo, but I am passionate about girly things. Shoes, 50% off coupons, sales, dark chocolate, and all the other wonderful things that make girls giddy. But even stronger than my passion for girly things is my passion for creating opportunities for women. Living your life using your passion to make an impact is one of life's greatest achievements. Harriet Tubman is the perfect example of a champion who lived her life fueled by a passion to impact lives. Born into the deepest of slavery, the idea that her life could be paved with richness and purpose was unheard of. Gaining her freedom from slavery, though, became an aha moment for her. Now, her life as a freedom fighter wasn't born from examples she saw in the community, nor was it born from conversations around the table. It was born from an inner passion. She was quoted as saying, always remember you have within you the strength, the patience, and the passion to reach for the stars and changed the world, and she did. When she had in her possession the very gift, that freedom, that had been denied to so many generations before her, she summoned the courage to risk it all for others. Not for others who could repay her, certainly not for fame. She risked it because she understood that this profound gift could not be selfishly contained. It had to be shared. When you use your passion to help others, it changes your life and positively affects every relationship you ever have. So then you ask, well, what can we do to make a change in the world? That question can be overwhelming, even daunting with all the conflicts in today's world. But I have good news for you because the answer already lies on the inside of you. You see, it lies within your own inner passions. So then how can we as entrepreneurs and innovators and leaders, how can we make a change in the world? To start, we have to remember that our passion is a gift that fuels our heart. And once our heart is fueled, then we can look deep, give back, and help out. I was born in Gary, Indiana, inside a very traditional and simple Puerto Rican family. Six kids, two parents. Neither of my parents were educated, but I learned very early what hard work was. I had no particular career ambition, and my only talent was this odd ability to talk to complete strangers for lengthy amounts of time. I completed high school with absolutely no fanfare, and then I lived my life as if I was trying to check off as many statistics as I could. College dropout, check. Unwed pregnancy, check. Welfare recipient, check, check. By the time I finally tapped in, to the example of hard worker that my parents had given me my whole life, I took a job to put food on the table, but no fuel in my soul. When I was 36 years old, I found myself going through a divorce. I had three children to support and very few options to sustain us. I was given two options. I could either re-enter corporate America, where others would determine my worth, and they would also determine my availability with my children, or I could start new. I chose the latter. So I pulled all of my resources and all of my life savings together, and I set out to have a new future. So with that $75, my company was born. I printed out 500 basic flyers detailing my 
services as a paint contractor. I put the babies in the double stroller, and my marketing department and I set out to pass out those flyers door to door. A few months into my newfound career, and I met a man who owned a painting and drywall company. He had seen some of my work and invited me to come aboard his staff so I could help、uh, with the troops. I was grossly underqualified, but I was passionate. We worked together for three months. I helped him with his crew and exchange. He taught me everything I needed to know in order to get my business off the ground. Again, after about three months, I knew that my decision to be an entrepreneur was the road that I needed to travel, and so I went back out in the world, knowing that this was where I needed to go. For a few years, business was slow and steady, but as business began to grow, I was naturally drawn to helping empower other women in similar situations. And do you know why? Because I love women. I love that we're smart and funny. I love that we're incredibly complicated and moody. I love that we come in every size and shape. And every woman I meet is my sister, unless she's younger than me, and she immediately becomes one of my daughters. My instincts to protect her kick in fiercely. And even if we have nothing in common or our politics wildly differ, she owns a part of my soul. And for me, that's my personal definition of passion. So I'm using this passion to employ women and to give women who have very little hope an opportunity because I need to be that conduit of hope to someone who is hurting, and I never have to look hard or long to find a woman in need. So I'm using my company so that I can make sure that women who are hurting, who need some finances, can get the help that they need. And when these women have children, we're passing that same hope down to their children. We are, in essence, teaching a trade that they can pass to the community. Now, the African proverb says, "It takes a village to raise a child." But I have a question that I need to ask each of you to ponder long after this talk is over. And that's what happens if the village leaders are broken, and they are. It used to be that we had a community mentality, and the neighborhood would get together, and we would all work as one. But we've traded in our community mentality for an island one instead. It used to be all for one and one for all, but now it's all about me. But islands. They have finite resources, and one of the outcomes of this single-mindedness is the epidemic of women who are raising their children alone. And that epidemic, it knows no boundary, not race or creed, not color, not economic, social status, nothing. Now, I want to be clear that I am not male bashing because I love men too, especially how they smell. However, you know, cologne. Okay. <clears throat> the truth still remains, though, that as a result of the village being broken, women and children take the biggest hit. So I have to ask yet again: Then what can we do? What can we do to inspire a change? Well, we can start by by using our gifts and our talents to mentor those who are less fortunate. We can remember that there are people who don't have some of the opportunities that we have, but we can mentor them. We can give them opportunities, and certainly, as CEOs, as entrepreneurs, as business leaders, we can take the time to hire, to hire the underqualified when the opportunities arise. Now, as long as I'm using personal quotes and cliches, how about this one? Am I my brother's keeper? The answer is we. All have to be because that's the first step in getting off that island. So I ask: Will you? Will you? Will you inspire a change in your local community? Will you incorporate the gifts that you have with somebody who's ready, ready to be helped? Because when you do, their whole life changes. 
a year and a half ago, a friend of mine committed a crime for which he was sentenced to spend three months in jail and the rest of his time in the county's work release program. If you're not familiar with this program, this program allows an individual to work while they're simultaneously completing the rest of their sentence. They live in a special facility, and they're only allowed out of the facility to complete their work obligations. Now, because my friend is also a painter, he asked if I would please bring him on board and help him out until he got back on his feet. Agreeing meant that I also had to follow the criteria and guidelines set by the county's program, which meant that I had to pick him up every morning and drop him off every night. It also meant I had to give up the only two prerequisites I had for employment, a car and freedom. So I reluctantly agreed. Now, I really didn't know what I was getting myself into. But a few months in, I learned that the county's work release program also had a division for women. And on one of his last weeks of employment, he introduced me to Kirsty. Kirsty is a perfect example of the broken village. The short story of her life is she grew up jumping from home to home never having the care and the protection a child needs. She hit the streets, and by the time she was 18 years old, she was sentenced to prison until she was 22, and then work release where I met her. I got to tell you, I didn't want to offer a ride to anybody else. But Kirsty was ready to get off that island and rejoin the village, and I knew that my sacrifice could be just what she needed in order to turn her life around. And things went great for a while. And she worked and she was doing very well. But when her sentence for work release was over, she moved to house arrest. And the only family member that would take her in wasn't interested in following the rules. And though she excelled at work, her home life was deteriorating. And as a result of a senseless fight, she was arrested and forced to spend the remainder of her time in prison where she is today. I was disgusted and heartbroken. And I felt that both the village and the community and the work release program had let her down and absolutely had failed this young girl when really what she needed was protection. And so I was done with the system and absolutely ready to get off the emotional roller coaster of helping women. But just a couple of weeks after Kirsty went away, I got a phone call from another woman in the center who had heard about my program, and she called me day and night until I would meet with her. Today, I have three women who are either in the system or going through the system on staff. Women who are ready to rejoin the village. Now, I'm going to tell you that the system is still riddled with all kinds of problems, but I can't be one of them. I choose to be a stepping stone of hope to a woman in need. Now, this is where my journey ends and yours begins, because I only have so many stones that I can offer. But if we collectively combine our stones to provide exactly what, these, what the community and the people that are broken and less fortunate, we can make a huge impact in our community together. And it doesn't matter if you're a baker or a banker. Everyone has something that they can offer. Harriet Tubman taught me one of the most valuable gifts I want to share with you. She taught me that you don't have to have a single role model in order to do the right thing, because she didn't. She did not. And yet, she did not allow that to keep her from going back into the South 19 times for rescue trips. Not poverty, not lack of education, not a debilitating blow to the head from her master in her youth was an excuse for her to say, I will not turn it back around and help somebody less fortunate behind me. And the good news is that means we too have no excuse not to do the same thing. We all have an obligation. For Harriet, 
Her passion was freedom. For me, my passion is helping women. This is a picture of a project that my staff and I just completed. Two of my main painters that helped complete this project just four months ago were in prison and knew nothing about painting. But this is what happens when you take someone that the world has thrown away and calls, and calls lost and you help them find themselves. Won't you, too, discover your own inner passion and use it to change the community around you? Thank you.